Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of all. And in this video we're going to examine some considerations to have when modeling for 3D printing in Blender. So being a channel that was created to focus on 3D printing in Blender and 3D printing design in Blender, this seemed like a great video to look at and it was brought up on the Patreon's Discord channel. If you are interested in the Patreon, there's a link in the description and you get lots of things like these videos a week ahead of time and you can get different files and other things as well as access to that Discord channel and it was asked about this tube in particular and how it was going to be best to make this 3D printable. So this seemed like a great idea to go through. So let's have a talk through this and the things I consider when designing something for 3D printing, especially because this is the point where I would normally start to consider it. So this model was provided by the Patreon I was discussing this with and I have Boolean these bits together just to make the processes later faster but you can see we've got to the point where the main shape is being designed and we're starting to add little details and this is the point where I start needing to consider how elements of the 3D printing process are going to affect this model and where I can place details. I will talk about some other aspects of the model as well but this is going to be the main focus as it covers a lot of little interesting details. So let's start with what is a pretty big thought process at this point. And that is, I need to start considering right now what angle I'm going to 3D print this at. As in what angle I'm going to have this on the build plate. A lot of general wisdom would say that we want this between 35 and maybe 45 degrees, somewhere sort of here, which could work quite well. But it's got a problem that it's going to mean adding some supports to these objects here. And I really like this carved detail. The other option is that I start doing it maybe at 45 degrees at the other angle and this has some immediate problems with this tube. It's quite thin and if I was to put a large support on this tube the support would be so large itself that it's likely when we have to take that off to break this tube. Let's have a look at what I mean. So what I'm going to do is bring this over to Lychee. You could use whatever slicing program you want but I am going to only just show this process once just so you get an idea of what I'm doing. And I'll be doing this behind the scenes each time I bring this into Lychee, but I wanted you to know the process. So first of all, I'm going to come in and apply all here, and I'm going to go into vertex mode, and we're going to have a problem that we've got overlapping vertices at each of the joins. I could have solved that with the merge function, but what I'm actually going to do is with machine tools just hit three, and that's going to delete all of the overlapping vertices. You could, if you don't have machine tools, click A, M, and merge by distance, but that's vastly quicker if you've got machine tools. The other thing I'm going to have to do is go into edge mode, and then I'm going to have to fill, so F there, and then same thing here, F there, so that we have a manifold object. You could again do this with fill caps in certain instances, but that has its own problems, so I generally like to do that manually. Then I'm going to just press Control, Shift, and Plus to do a Boolean that doesn't require me to then confirm the modifier because it is automatically destructive, and we've got this as one whole object. I'll go to my 3D print toolbox, check all, just to make sure there's no major issues, and we don't have any major issues would be non-manifold edges or bad contiguous edges, with none of those being a problem, I don't care about all of the other ones. Intersect faces and non-flat faces don't really concern me because that will be fixed in the next step in almost 99.9% .9 of cases. So generally something not to worry about. Then I'm going to go to File, Export and STL. Click Selection Only so it only does the object and not any of the other cutters that have been used. And then we're going to export that as an STL. I'm then going to open this object in 3D Builder check it's on millimetres and import it, click that this needs to be fixed for any of the issues that's basically triangulating everything. And it's just a little quicker and more efficient at doing it and sometimes can solve some other problems like overlaps. Save that and now it's ready to be brought into Lychee. So I'll add my files, bring in my mace and we're good to go. So let's talk about these issues. So first of all, if I want to support this, and I'm just going to come in and prepare this, we're going to need to add a support on here. In fact, for each of these ribs, we're going to have to add in lots of supports here. And realistically, I'd probably want that to be somewhere in the region of, because of this overhang, maybe a medium support. And you can see this is massive in comparison, and breaking this off is really likely to break this tube itself. So this is not ideal. And I'm also going to have to support each of these little downward facing tips, which is really quite pointed, and I'd probably do something like using my light, so that is with a tip diameter of 
0.2 millimeters and I'll just click that on here to support those but this isn't going to go particularly well this is probably likely to snap off a bit of this it's just going to look quite ugly so we're going to talk about how we're going to deal with these issues now I will mention that this would in theory also have the issue that some of these edges are flat to the build plate I'm going to be honest since trying this I've actually found that as soon as you stick a few light supports on this it isn't actually much of a problem though I will say that we've got a similar issue here with this point which isn't going to get a nice edge as we put supports on it so we'll talk about how we'll solve that as well so let's just go into layout mode and I'm just going to delete this and we'll come back to blender and see what we're going to do so there's several ways of us deciding to solve this I'm going to shift and D and bring this across the first is that we don't use these small ribs it's going to be a problem at this scale, so I'm just going to delete that, come to my curve, go to my curve data properties, and then I'm going to come down to my geometry, bevel, and I'm going to change that to, let's say, 0.5 in a depth. So a total of one millimeter in thickness. That's probably the minimum I'll go to with a tube. I'm going to up my resolution to, I don't know, eight, and then we're just going to make this be put in place so I'm just going to G and then X that across somewhere to about there and then I'll go into edit mode and let's just E that move that up and then E for that as well now this still has a problem that we've got quite a lot of overhang here it feels like this needs a support and again being only a millimeter wide this is likely to break it. Now, that might be being a little bit overly cautious, but I'm actually gonna do something to try and remove the need for a support just totally. All I'm gonna do is just edit in these points. So let's just make it so it's a bit less extreme on that overhang. And suddenly, this model is gonna pretty much support itself at this point. If I keep this vertically, this bottom section will be the support holding up the main tube to the bottom. And then as soon as we get a slight overhang, it's starting getting to the point where it's connected here. So this is probably going to work out all right. I could maybe, let's just delete that, have a little bit less there. So that would work really well. And we're not going to have any problems with this. This tube will entirely support itself. The other option that I've got is to make this larger. And I'd normally go for anything that's got a ribbed cabling to it being maybe one and a half millimeters as a minimum. So let's just make this bigger. Several ways of doing that. The first is to come in and edit this individually. So I'm gonna come into my modifier panel and I'm just gonna make sure all of these are on so that when I go into vertex mode, I can actually edit the original points and they'll all be edited. So what I can do is just A and then S and scale this up to somewhere here. And all I need to do is just come back to my item in object mode and it will tell me the size of this. So at the moment my X is 1.38. So let's just S that a bit more. And there we go, 1.45. There you go, a bit over 1.5. That will probably be fine. Now. To do that, I'm gonna to have to increase the size of these. So let's just S that up a bit. There looks about right. And then let's scale this up a bit as well. That looks fine, but we've got a little bit of an overhang here. So let's just Alt and W, D, and let's go to a box and then just get rid of that bit so it's not a problem. Right, so this should work quite well. Now we can still do the same option here of trying to make this so it's got less of an extreme angle to it. So let's just G that and bring that in, maybe somewhere there. Oops, let's just sort out those. And we've already done a lot to solve these problems. So this is gonna be much nicer to support. The ridges are larger, so they're gonna be easy to support for that reason. We've taken out the exaggerated arc here. Let's just bring down this array count. We don't need it going all the way to there. So this is gonna do a lot for us in terms of this cable supporting itself, though we're still gonna support some of these downward pointing ribbed sections. Now, with that in mind, as I said, we don't like this sharp edge. It causes a lot of problems. So let's just go back into edit mode. Let's go in edge, and we're gonna sort that out. So I'm actually just gonna alt select that edge and shift alt select that edge. And if I just control and B to bevel them, let's scroll that up a bit. 
this rounded edge is going to be a lot friendlier to supports. Or more accurately, the supports are going to be more friendly to this rounded edge, which is going to solve a lot of our issues as well. Now, with that in mind, I'm actually going to do the same thing to this edge. It's not going to like being supported and it's likely to break. So let's go into edge mode. Oh, we're probably not going to like that. So let's actually go to K for knife mode. Click there, there, enter, and then same thing on the other side. So K, there, there, enter. And then that means that I can now select this edge, control and X and control and X. And that means that now we can control and B to bevel that. That's quite ugly. I'm guessing the scale hasn't been applied. There we go. So control and A, scale, edge mode, control and B, and just something like that. will again, make that much nicer to support. The other thing that we can do that I find quite useful, though this is entirely up to you, is that I quite like going to edge mode, control and R, let's click E, match the side at the bottom, and then we can go into face mode, alt click there, and then Q, alt click on the ear macro, and make a little bit of a wider bit there. And this works quite well because it gives you somewhere where you're gonna have supports, you can sand this flat at the bottom and it looks like a nice little extra detail. So, so far in add-ons we've used box cutter and hard ops. There's a link to a discount bundle of those two in the description. But you could easily do that using native tools in Blender as well. So at the moment, this is going to be either option, whether I want it thinner or I want it to be wider and ribbed, be much easier to support. The final place that actually might have a sharp point that we don't want is gonna be here. Let's go into edge mode, yep. Let's go to vertex mode, there, there, let's press J to join. And I'm gonna select these ones at the bottom and then GG and move those in slightly to match this slight chamfer on that edge. So this should be much easier to 3D print than what we originally had. Let's go and have a look at these in Lychee. So we've got both of those and that process worked perfectly fine that I showed you earlier. Let's just move these around slightly and we can have a look at what we're gonna do. So this object, basically, we're not gonna to need to support this tube at all. So this is not gonna need anything. It will slice fine without it. So I'm not gonna really talk about that. I just wanted to show bringing it into Lychee so you could see that. Now this one we are gonna to need to support. Again, it's got much less of that arc, so we're not gonna need as much of a support, but we are gonna to need to do something about these little points. Now, in reality, just so you're aware of this, I would just do a automatic supports and then go from there, but I just want to demonstrate this. So what I'd do is I'd use some really light supports. The standard support has a 0.3 millimeter diameter. I'm gonna go for 0.2, which I've set up in these custom unassigned spots. And then all I'm gonna do is look at each of these angles that points towards the ground or the build plate and just support those. I could quite comfortably press Control and Alt and just support that to each one of these. So that is an option as well. Depends what you like. I like doing that for a couple of them and then just supporting a new one again. So entirely up to you what you want to go with here. But go with whatever you find comfortable. And as soon as we get to about probably here, I'm not gonna to need to support these other ones as they're pretty much close to horizontal. Likewise, I'm probably gonna to need to support one of these. So let's come in to that one, I think is probably gonna be the first one that's gonna to need to be supported. And then each one of these, Control Alt, and then let's bring that into that support. So we've got those all working there, and I can actually do that for this one as well. So it's not gonna to be too bad to support this now. And importantly, and this is the key bit of this, what we're not gonna to have to do is do a thick support here, which would then risk breaking this off. Now, if I continue this, the reason why this vertically is very good is because I can start adding in other detailing here that, again, if I had at a certain angle, it wouldn't like. For example, I could put some rivets on this object here and at the top, and those will be generally fine without me having to add in supports again. Though, again, if we have a look at this bottom bit, we can just add some nice supports in here and that'll be fine. Though obviously when I normally add in the automatic supports, let's just actually do that. I'll put it on medium and generate automatic supports. It will delete those, we'd have to do that again. At this point, let's go to visibility and just add tips and bases. In fact, let's just do tips. What we'd want to do is add a support in here. I'd probably add one and then I'd go once again for my light or very light supports 
just to make sure that we've got this object covered. I'd also probably put a heavy support on the bottom here and then once again some light supports around it. I normally find that something like that and then one at the back is more than enough to support this even though it's perfectly flat to the build plate. So there we go, some 3D print considerations to make when creating tubes and a couple of ways to solve the same problem. Have a great day guys.